Good evening and welcome to This Week in Joe's Basement. I'm Joe. And this is my basement. So, This Week in Joe's Basement, we're going to give you people out there in television land a chance to participate in the television making process. What we're going to do is we're going to show you a full half hour of the best of Joe's Basement. And uh, we've got these two telephone numbers displayed on the screen, two payphones in Hyde Park. And the producers of This Week in Joe's Basement, including yours truly, will be manning the phones and uh, waiting for your call. And um, just give us any responses you have to the stuff you're seeing or anything you've ever seen on Joe's Basement or anything else that's on your mind, really. And um, on the next show, which will be Monday, November 12th, um, since we're back on a bi-weekly schedule now, um, we will air the most interesting phone calls because we'll be videotaping the process of us answering them and uh, shtick in response to requests from you people out there in television land. So, uh, for example, if uh, somebody out there says that we really ought to have more obscure camera angles, then, uh, well, <laughs> you know, what the hey, it's only television, so we'll, uh, we'll probably do it, you know? And um, so, uh, I mean, hell, NBC, does NBC do that? So, um, check it out. And, um, Get a chance to be an armchair quarterback for a little while, at any rate. All right. So, this week in Joe's Basement, we're going to explore the meaning and the origins of Joe's Basement, culminating in a special presentation of our pilot episode, the very first episode of This Week in Joe's Basement, the television event that shocked the nation, or at least managed to befuddle a few television engineers over at Chicago Access Corporation. But first, we're going to look at some press and some viewer mail. All right. Um, Rick Kogan, uh, uh, Rick Kogan, excuse me, the Chicago Tribune, one of the coolest TV critics I've talked to in a while, um, wrote a review of us in uh, September 17th issue of the Tribune, wrote a review of Sledgehammer Diplomacy, our show on race relations in the real world. And uh, he writes the following. I've never understood what point the bare feet and food munching that dominate this weekly cable access program are trying to make. But as ambiguous and bored as host Joe Winston can seem at times, so can he frequently be provocative, and no more so than in this week's edition, a rebroadcast of a show that first aired in April. Sledgehammer Diplomacy leaves the basement and takes its camera to the streets of Hyde Park, Woodlawn, and Uptown to ask black people what they think of white people, and white people what they think of black people. Some of the answers are stupid. Others are frank, angry, and honest. In some, they represent a fascinating and not a little frightening look at the uneasy racial relations in this city. Hey. Thanks, Rick. All right, so we got some mail. Um, first of all, a letter from Paul Lopez, who writes the following. Dear Joe, I don't know what it is about your show, but I like watching it. What is your purpose for doing it? I never get any monumental meaning out of it. Are you trying to be educational? Why don't you do a show on how you put the show together and how, how other people can take advantage of public access television? I'd like to know more about you and how you got the way you are. How old are you? What college did you go to? Who else lives in your house? What else do you do? Job, question mark. Not that it bothers me, but do you think it's appropriate to swear so much? Fuck you. Another viewer, uh, Ricky, sex left ambiguous from the north side, uh, not quite so pleased with me, writes the following on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Stationery. Hey, Joe, I was just watching your show Monday, and I saw all these people telling jokes. Basically, none of them were funny. 
but I was very upset to hear a few anti-gay jokes in there. There should be no need to broadcast homophobic jokes in these days, especially when acts of anti-gay crimes have increased over 100% in the last year. Your show shows no social or political awareness in these times of sexist, racist, anti-gay bigots that are so prevalent in this society. Move over, Jesse Helms, Sam Kinison, and Andrew Dice Clay. Make room for Joe. You should apologize to your viewing public. Devote a show to the issue of homosexuality. Me and my friends would be happy to be on it. <laughs> Ricky. All right, Ricky. Well, <laughs> um, regrettably, I must give you some attention for this very silly letter you've written me. And that's the only apology I'm going to make. Um, what I'm going to do is, um, you've decided to slam me, so since I'm still small time, I am going to respond to you. And what I've done is I'm going to put on the screen the various points you've made in your so, quote, unquote, argument. Mm -hmm. Point two, uh, you said a few of the jokes were homophobic. Okay, well, we dug up whatever jokes we could in that show that had anything to do with homosexuality whatsoever, and we found only one that was anti-homosexual, took any stance on the matter altogether, and we're going to run it for you right now. Um, it just, I guess, goes to show the poisoning of the young minds of America. If you was up in the tree with a fag, would you get down? If you was up in the tree with a fag, would you get down? Would you get down? Yes. Oh! You would get down! <laughs> All right, yes, it was anti-homosexual, and Ian was even homophobic. <laughs> uh, but, um, come on, eight-year-old kid. Anyway... This is from some sort of a, uh, he used some cardboard thing from some pizza container, and he writes, Go Sox, pen pals, question mark, and can we send video? And, uh, well, I think I gave the answer to that in my uh, episode number six, Alone in the Dark Room. I think I said the following. That anything you send to me, I will somehow present it on the air, I promise. Anything at all, really. <laughs> and, um... Uh, don't send 50 blank pages, because I thought of that already, so it's not funny anymore. So you can send video, anything you want. And in fact, I'll make that promise right now, that if you send me any video, I will somehow represent it on the air. <laughs> but I, I don't promise for how long, but, uh, but I will somehow represent video or any interesting objects or you know, anything like that, as long as it hasn't decomposed by the time I get to it. <laughs> okay. Well, last week we had our viewer call-in show, and that gave us an opportunity to find out more about what your concerns are out there in television land. And in particular, one recurring question that we got often was, um, you know, what is this show anyway? You know, what is a bunch of guys sitting around the basement. What do you guys usually do? Is, have you broken into Channel 32? Is this Wayne's World? Okay, this is not Wayne's World. Get that straight. Wayne's World uses a two-camera setup. Get a life. All right. Well, to help clear up this whole what is Joe's Basement question, what we've decided to do is provide you with a special Joe's Basement starter kit, which begins with one surly host, comes complete with two-day stubble, t-shirt depicting a local Hyde Park eatery, slightly unkempt hairdo, one convenient container of snack food, two bare feet, slightly unwashed, thrust towards the viewer, and most importantly of all, a surly irreverent attitude and a proclivity to insult the viewer, rightfully so, I might add. Add to this a dash of maniacal laughter, <laughs> a slightly skewed perspective on things, I'll be glad. I'll be, I'll be glad. I'll be happy. a proclivity for self-reference for those of you philosophically and intellectually inclined out there in the audience. Just remember, I'm the one who said it. I, said, I asked for cigarettes. I want a pack of, no, I want a candy bar. Add also one of any number of small burrowing insectivores with large expressive eyes, concealed ears, and soft fur. Flounder and mole sauce, that's just scrumdilicious. At a visit with a man in the street. Excuse me. A mad craving for cigarettes. <laughs> and ultimately, whatever the fuck we feel like. <laughs> well, while, while I look for this, uh, I started separating some eggs. And that's as far as I okay. got. I need to separate a lot more eggs. So if you could take care of that, and I will hunt up this recipe. And then I'll let you know what the next step is. Hey, Genghis, how do you separate eggs? Separate eggs. Here you go. How to separate eggs. Three easy lessons. Uh -huh. Sign here, please. Easy. Yeah. Uh huh. Got a bowl. There you go. Thank you. Tell you what. Why don't I separate the eggs? And while I'm doing that, I'll read off these next steps to you. All 
right, so um, can you bring two cups water to a boil in a medium size saucepan? Uh, right, yeah. Um. It's pretty hot. We must remember to use a pot holder when mm. we remove the souffle. Oh, Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts. Ah, yes. Brussels sprouts. I have this pal who used to go into grocery stores and stick the whipped cream nozzle up his nose. And if you turn it the right way, you get the effects of the, you know, I'll try it. Go ahead. Go for it. Oh, no, I think... Hold on, I've forgotten the dog food. Right. Mmm. Yeah. Mighty dog. Right. Now, Paul, tell your joke. Tell your Liz Weiner joke. It's a Lee Weiner joke. Lee Weiner? Lee Weiner. Lee Weiner. Not Liz Weiner? Lee Weiner was uh, a fat, loathsome little gentleman that I know is talking. You should be looking at him. Uh, yeah, but we're getting audience reaction shots now. Audience reaction shots should be no longer than one-tenth the length of the entire segment. Yes, but you see, what we'll do is we'll cut in those, uh, We have no editing facilities stuff. whatsoever, Paul. Sure we do. This is video. What we'll do is we'll use... Two... <laughs> mm? <laughs> Smile. Smile. And do his beard. <laughs> ah! <laughs> because you see, life is sometimes like that, you know. I can't believe someone would want to murder him. Mm. <sighs> if only I could find one missing piece, then the whole puzzle would fall into place <laughs> together again. I must now interrogate both of you. Hey, has anybody got some smokes? For you. Genghis, did you buy me a cigarette? Did you know the deceased? Yes, he was occasionally on the show, mm. though he never had very many lines. I'm Detective Resnick. I'm afraid it is my unpleasant duty to inform you that your dear friend has been brutally murdered tonight. Now, I must ask that no one Leave this room. Bummer. Well, at least now I won't have to pay him back the ten bucks I owe him. I'm shocked by your casual indifference, young man. This is just the sort of nihilism which characterizes... Oh, fuck you. Who died and made you king anyway, huh? No Chicago public access seeks to promote freedom of speech. The use of profanity... First, must be approved by the Cable Planning Committee. And also approved by a release form signed in triplicate. Hey, uh, you want to bum me some smokes? No! Go away! I don't know what the fuck he was searching for. I told him where the nitrogen bomb was. But he looked over at where I said the nitrogen bomb, bomb was. He saw a two-liter Coke, two Coke bottle, which was which shredded by now. Shredded by now. And he said, and he said, "What the fuck are you talking what about? What the fuck are you talking what about? Talking about? That's, not That's not a bomb. There's a two-liter Coke bottle. bottle. It's a piece of garbage. That's some simple idiot that you take, idiot take me for. You little punks. You think you can just get away with something? You were college shits. You know, I was rejected from college anyway. I never wanted to be a policeman. I wanted to be a professor of philosophy when I got out of high school. And I applied to college. I applied to the same college that you went to. And they went to, in fact, and they rejected me. And I remember that. And I hold you responsible. Just thought you'd like to know. Now, I already thought 
that he was kind of a jerk. I didn't like him at all, and I wasn't going to take crap from this guy if I didn't have to. And I looked up, and I saw that there were all kinds of neighborhood youth, all kinds of neighborhood youth, unauthorized, unauthorized. And artistic, and artistic neighborhood, neighborhood youth, youth riding, riding bicycles, bicycles, bicycles all around, around, all around the, track the track where the rugby, where the rugby game was going on that, that, that I was there to watch. And, and so, so I said to him, you know, I'll be glad. I'll be glad. I'll be, glad. I'll be happy, happy to, comply to comply with your request. request. At least I feel. At least I feel. But, but first, first, you've got to get rid of everybody you've, else. You've, you've got to get rid of everybody else. So he said, please step into my office. And I stepped into his office. And there was a man behind the desk. Where Mr. Stein usually sat. And Mr. Stein closed the door behind me without entering himself. And I thought, oh man, who is this dude sitting here looking at me with those cold, cool, dead eyes? And the man said to me real slow, you know, said, Hi, John. I'm Officer O'Brien. What's he doing? Self preservation. Is that his stomach? As just not too long ago, my, my friend Genghis was saying, ah, Genghis, yeah. eight yeah, quadrants, damn, how did I do that? Now I've got one in isolation, fuck it, kill them, kill them, die, die, die. Well, that's violent. It's very and this violent. got me thinking mm -hmm. about defense, preparation, and in case of personal attack. Uh, Self-defense. So I've been sitting here. I'm taking the tobacco from the cigarette Ooh. and sticking it onto the bottom of this piece of tape. Right on the bottom, huh? That's a pretty good idea. Which has absolutely nothing to do with defense. Oh. Why should it? But it is a fascinating, excuse me, conjecture because right. um, Glad he put his as I was away. doing this. Well, that's what I meant. When I said that I didn't mean anything by it, I just wanted a pack of cigarettes, okay? Just a pack of cigarettes. Excuse me. Excuse me? What? what? Um, that's not what I said. What do you mean, that's not what I said? See, I meant cigarettes. Mm -hmm. I know what I said. I just told you. The clerk said I thought you meant candy no, bar. I remember what I said. What no, I said, look, no, I I'm not, not your baby. baby. So why, why don't you just sell me a candy bar? Candy bar. No, no, I said candy bar. No, I actually I didn't ask for pack of cigarettes. I didn't ask for candy bar. No, I asked for cigarettes. No, I mean, I didn't ask for cigarettes. I asked for candy bar. Or did I ask for cigarettes? No, I asked for cigarettes. No, I remember. I'm the one who said it. I said, I want a pack of, I want a candy bar. Oh, yeah, yeah, so we're going to go out on a date. Oh, isn't that cute? We're going to go. We're going to go to El Lugar's, it's this, this, this Mexican restaurant in Hyde Park. It's a nice restaurant. And they serve moles. No prejudice there. Nice guys. Anyway, so we're going we're gonna to go to that, that Mexican restaurant, and we're going to sit down. It's going to be nice because they have this wonderful flounder and mole sauce that's just scrum delicious. It's wonderful. You should try Mole. 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 Nah, it's mole. I'm sure it's mole. It couldn't be mole. That would be disgusting. Who need a mole? Ha! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Eat worms. What do you think of black people? <laughs> like, I won't answer that. Okay, no opinion. No opinion on that one. Thank you very much. What do you think of white people? Uh, white people, they straight, you know? They, yeah. they just like me, you know? Okay. They straight, just, you know, they just stay white and we black, okay. you know? My opinion? Yeah. What's your feelings? I have no opinion. Okay. Just, uh... Um... So you've never... They're just people like anyone else. Okay. All white people ain't in the same boat, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Because like you, I mean, if you was a prejudiced white man, you wouldn't be standing here talking to us, right? Sure. So I don't have anything against you. But it's a few of us, see, by us living in this neighborhood, it's a few of them around here that just don't agree with us being here. You see what I'm saying? You could tell the ones that, that, that don't want us here because when they see us walk down the street, they're across the street. You see what I'm saying? So those are the ones that just ain't no good for us. Okay. Well, what do you think of white people? <laughs> Classic. That's classic. <laughs> um, you know, this is uh, an issue that obviously I have to confront a lot here at the University of mm -hmm. Chicago. Um, you know, white folks are afraid to get mugged, and they see black people walking, you know, through campus to get wherever, to their jobs or wherever. And there's, there's a real 
you know, sense of, you know, the siege mentality. And if you're just looking at the buildings, yeah. it's like the Huns are going to attack at any minute. You know, the fact is I'm a student here and uh, I earned that right to be a student. And I work just as hard or harder, um, you know, as, as people who are here. And I'm not on any kind of scholarship and I don't play football and I don't do any of that. You know, it's not any athletic ability. What I got here, I got here through my own ability. And because of the way I look, I'm judged as, you know, something other, you know, entirely different yeah. than what I am. Mm -hmm. I got a difference between black people and niggers. Niggers are gangbangers. Black people are people who have respect for other people. That's my difference between blacks. I like black people, niggers I don't like. I need a cigarette. Cigarettes, cigarettes. Cigarettes, cigarettes. Hey, how you doing? You know, I really need a cigarette. So uh, I'd like to buy a pack of cigarettes, please. Here, wait. No. Uh, no, that's just one pack. That's all I need. It's my nickel. No, no, no uh, cigarettes. You don't serve cigarettes here? No. No? Not, not even one cigarette? No. Oh, wait, no cigarettes. No. Ah! <laughs> okay, all right, I'll leave. Right. Where are my cigarettes? I need a cigarette. I need a cigarette now! Hey, excuse me, sir. Sir? Uh, I was wondering if I could just, um, one cigarette, please? No, get out of here! <laughs> God, man, I really need a cigarette. I really need a cigarette. I don't care what kind of cigarette it is. I don't care if it's a fucking menthol. I don't care if it's a cool. I don't care if it's the fucking merit. There's got to be a cigarette around here somewhere. What's wrong with people these days, man? You ask for a cigarette, they act like total jerks. I don't believe this is country. Man, hey, cancer face. Hey, hey, you. Hey, you with the screwdriver. Got a cigarette, man? Oh, God, you're no, ugly. Fuck off. Oh, fuck you, man. I smell cigarettes! Oh my god! <laughs> All right. Now, another question we've had from people. Uh, besides what is this show anyway, is more specifically, what does the opening segment mean? You know, what's with all those pictures anyway? So, uh, I think to clear things up, I've decided that uh, I think um, somewhere in this basement, I think I still have the meaning of the opening. Let's, uh, let's go check this out and uh, take a look for it. Uh, let's see. Meaning of the opening. Meaning of the opening. Uh, let's see. Um... And over here, um, follow me into the other room here. Let's see. I keep a lot of shit over in this bookcase over here. Maybe, maybe I can find it. Uh. God, these techies can be such slobs. Hmm. Wonder what happened to that. Hmm. Yeah, it was me four thousand dollars, but I still have all his film. <laughs> Bear with me for a moment here. Ah, uh, well, maybe over here by the TV set. Um, well, I could find my remote. Where is my remote? Ah, in the fridge. I should have known. All right, so um. What I've got here is I've got a uh, I've got a tape of all the uh, opening pictures, and I can lead you through what they actually mean. Okay, here is Samash wearing my fur hat, Paul and Dan preparing to wrestle, Earl juggling five balls, Jingus catching the frisbee about to fall flat on his face. There I am reading. There Martin and Anton are playing the video game. There we are playing Civilization. I'm looking silly in my Medici t-shirt. There are playing Civilization again. Martin sticking his tongue out. There we got some fireworks. Anton's drinking the Pepsi backlit, just like on TV. Dan is catching the frisbee flying through the air. There John Erickson is looking pretty studly. There's John Kohler with his old girlfriend. Ha, get rid of her. There's Paul looking pretty mean in his leather jacket. Martin's not impressed. Stefan's sort of staring off into space. He's retarded. There's Dan leaning back on his motorcycle. He later crashed it. There's Anton reading while the rest of us are playing this game on the Macintosh. There we are playing uh, Civilization again. There's Jengis about to throw the frisbee after he fell down. There I am again in my fur hat. All right. So, uh, well, that's basically what all these pictures mean. We just thought we'd get you cultists a leg up on the American public on that one. If you're wondering about the music, it's some classical shit uh, known to us plebes as the Masterpiece Theater theme, uh, played in a revisionist neo-basement four-fingered style by Paul Pomerlo. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's get back to the show here. <sighs> See what we want to do here. 
What was that? Oh, well. Right. So, um, let's get on with the show. So what we're going to do is we're going to present you with a reprise of our opening uh, pilot episode of This Week in Joe's Basement, the very first episode on structural cinema. And uh, the version that we're going to give to you is uh, not full length. It's been trimmed by about 10 minutes to accommodate this bit of shtick that you're watching right now. And, uh, but I think you'll be happy for the brevity because this is about structural cinema, which is film or video which is structured to make you aware of the passage of time. Like that, for example. Uh, so uh, this episode, you'll notice a few things about it, uh, as being the very first one, the one that uh, engendered the show. Uh, you'll see that even from the very beginning, it contains all the essential ingredients of Joe's basement, that being the, uh, the surly host sort of reclining in his chair, munching on snack food with his mouth open, and thrusting his bare feet in his irreverent attitudes towards the viewer. Another thing about this show is that it, uh, it was part of what we now finally look back on as our fuck the viewer period, when we really didn't think that there was anybody watching the show. And uh, we were probably right at that point. So uh, I think you'll see that uh, this attitude is definitely reflected in the show, which uh, also engendered the slogan, uh, which is that you shouldn't watch too much TV because it's not, not good for you, not good for you at all. Right, so I'm going to let my alter ego take over at this point and present to you the pilot episode of This Week in Joe's Basement. <sighs> good evening and welcome to This Week in Joe's Basement. I'm Joe, and this is my basement. So this week we're going to learn about structural cinema. And for that, I'm going to change my shirt and we're going to go upstairs. Hello. You know, some people think that uh, public access cable is really boring. Well. You know, that's just because I think that uh, sometimes just not that much effort goes into it. So, uh, hang on a sec. So filmmakers have this idea, which is called structural cinema, which is a piece of film or video whose function is essentially to make you aware of the passage of time. A classic example of this is Andy Warhol's piece, uh, 24 Hours of the Empire State Building in Real Time. And, and the idea is that there's some value in you actually sitting for all this time and watching some process take place. So I'm just going to sit here with my beer for the remainder of this 24 minutes here and uh, read the newspaper. And uh, <laughs> well, I don't recommend that you watch it. It's going to be extremely dull. So I think this would be a really good opportunity for you to do something besides watch TV. You know, like, uh, get outside, read a book, write a poem, do something constructive with your life. TV rots your mind. It's not good for you. Uh, 